Hello my tarot friends, Justin Michael, welcome back to my channel, and welcome of course if it's your first time visiting, I appreciate you as always. Uh, today I'm going to do a review of a deck uh, that's very special actually, It's uh, for one it's created by a friend of mine, Alejandro Rosan, uh, and it's called the Tarot de Ambiguities. Uh, which was published through Artisan Tarot. I just received this deck like two days ago, uh, but it came at like the worst possible time, which is always what happens when I when I'm waiting for a deck I ordered to come, and it just comes at like the worst possible time, and I don't have time to do a walkthrough. Um, so I wanted to do this like the day I got it. Unfortunately, I mean it's only been two days, but um, but I just haven't had the time. Uh, and I was going to do it tomorrow, but then I said, you know what? I'm going to stay up an extra hour tonight, and I'm just going to do this review uh, before I go to bed. So here we are. We're going to look at the Tarot Day Ambiguities. Um, and uh, so, like I said, you know, this is a deck I've been very excited for um, since its inception. If you haven't seen the interview I did uh, on my channel, definitely check that out. Also check out, uh, he did a like a, a little bit of a, a lecture through Artisan Tarot, which is probably going to be available on their website, um, which was also very interesting if you want to learn more about this deck. But I'll give you the short version. Alejandro's from Cuba. He began creating this deck in Cuba, um, and he finished it. Uh, he met Artisan Tarot through a mutual friend, Stephen Bright, and they picked up the project and decided that they would publish it for him. Um, they also advanced him enough money to leave Cuba. Uh, and that's basically it. So since since then, he's only been in Miami for, you know, a couple of months now. Um, but, you know, he this was basically his ticket out of Cuba, which is, you know, in that regard in itself, it's very special. It's also very special because just aesthetically, um, it scratches an itch for me that I very rarely see scratched, for lack of a better, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase. Um, you know, it's just, it's very rare to see a modern interpretation of the Tower de Marseille or any historic deck for that matter. We see so many restorations of historic tarots. We see, you know, I mean, how many versions, myself included in this, so, you know, in, in my and Shell, Shell's deck, you know, but like how many versions of the Jean Dodal are available? You know, I mean, it's crazy. The Jean Noblet. And it's always the, hand, the same handful of decks, too, which is insane because there's so many tarot decks available uh, in the museums that have not been done yet. And uh, so that one wish is that, you know, more historic decks will, will, you know, be restored rather than recycling the same old decks. But also that new decks are being done in that old style. And I've seen it done from a few people that I really like. Like for instance, Ian Comsty. Um, he did the Rare Triumphs. Um, he did um, the Great Parade. Um, you know, these are decks that I really, really love because they're originals based uh, in the historic kind of pattern. Uh, and I just, I really, really like that. And I wish that there was more of that. I don't think that there's much demand for it. Um, but I think that it's great when it really ha when it happens. And it doesn't happen very often. You know, like I said, we always see the same decks being done. So when I saw that Alejandro was doing this, and the few cards that I saw, I instantly fell in love with it. And I thought, wow, like, this is a breath of fresh air. It shows, for one, that he has good taste, in my opinion... But also, he's just a talented, brilliant artist. Um, and the way that he did this deck was amazing. But before we get into the deck, I just want to show you. So, I ordered from Artisan Tarot, obviously. That's where you order the deck. And all the information is going to be below. Um, but it comes with a couple extras. Um, some postcards, which uh, I ordered a few extras, you know, just to have uh, as notes. I may even frame a couple of these, but they're really beautiful. Uh, and this is just done in the same kind of unique, beautiful style that he did the deck in. So you have like the Grand Dragon Rouge, which is like, uh, you know, dude, I mean, there's a lot going on here, you know. And his his images are, there's so much symbolism and just like intense imagery. It's almost dreamlike, his images. 
it's really a beautiful style and it reminds me of things that you would see in the renaissance like in some of the renaissance paintings where like you have all these people doing different things um but just beautiful and he pays tribute to almost every style of tarot deck i mean you see here there's the belgium uh devil um from the you know uh vandenboer and uh the Vaville. So you see a whole bunch of stuff going on, but it's very interesting. Um, and also, I oh, finally, because I've been gawking over these uh, for forever, I ordered some socks, some Tarot de Marseille socks. I ordered two pairs because I'm crazy like that. Um, but uh, I figured I'm going to save one. One to use and one to lose. But in my case, it's like one to um, save. <laughs> Um, but beautiful, you know, this is the Jean Noblet and just going to be really cool while wearing the work. Um, so I figured I'd show you that too. Let's take a look at the tarot deck, um, which is in that very good, I mean, my favorite thing about artists in tarot, you have to give them credit for their card stock. It's really, really good. Uh, particularly if you are like a riffle shuffler or you like handling like a deck of cards, they have almost like a very luxurious playing card feel to them they slide like a bicycle deck um but they're also pretty th like thick and durable um i like them a lot in fact sometimes they're a little too slippery like you can they sometimes when i shuffle them they fling all over the place um i really have to be careful but um and their boxes are all this is the same kind of box that um you know that you'll get with any of their other decks which aren't fancy but i've come to actually like them they will hold up i mean they do take a beating but i can always uh get a bag or a special box for this which actually i'm going to use the veveal bag that they sent me for this deck because they have the same backs uh, or similar backs not the same exact but uh similar uh which is the you know the black cross design which you see on the um john the Blay and the Jacques Faville and the Tarot of Paris something similar to that it's not exactly the same but it's very similar you know it's in that similar style which is probably my favorite Marseille back I, I just love the black crosses I love the way they look um, they're very very cool um, so yeah let's take a look at the images um, so the Tarot de Ambiguities is a reimagination of the Tarot de Marseille, faithful to its style and inspired by its symbolism. So faithful to its style and inspired by its symbolism. That's exactly what I'm talking about. A vibrant narrative emerges from its evocative art, hand-drawn by Alejandro Rosan in Cuba. Details of the original deck are explored in Tarot Shapeshifter, its guidebook written by Stephen Bright in the UK, which has not been released yet. Uh, and when it is released, I will you know, make an announcement and maybe have Stephen on for a chat too. Uh, Stephen Bright's an, an awesome guy, you know, and he was getting into really into Tarot de Marseille leading up to this. And I remember him messaging me you know about tarot of marseille we both kind of got like really interested in marseille around the same time it's interesting to see his journey kind of unfold i'm really excited to see his book the tarot shapeshifter and um i know i mean just based on what alejandro was saying and you know he wrote a really good book it's just very exciting and i would expect nothing less from steven so but anyway so that that's exciting um so let's take a look at the images. And by the way, I think Alejandro was saying that he made the backs like not all exactly the same. Like there's some differences uh, in the way they're cut to kind of mimic the historic style, which again is not something you see often. I mean, that's really cool and probably expensive too. I mean, I don't know how many variations that he did, but you know it's interesting nonetheless so um i think that's right first off i gotta say i love the the tone the color of them um they were done with um i think he spilled coffee or tea on the paper and this is actually how he did it like you know it was actually he actually poured you know tea or coffee on it to stain the paper and then he hand drew everything using fountain pens uh which to me is just incredible you know um i know a lot of people who do this type of 
artwork generally do it on computers on like you know the iPad or, or you know a drawing pad or something but he did everything in pen and ink in Cuba which is just uh, it, it just adds to the kind of mystique of this deck but anyway so we have you know a magician is a standard looking magician I mean something you would see in Tarot of Marseille but there's a there's some added elements to it that are just very obvious that don't even really need to be uh, talked about much except that you know I will point them out in the first couple of cards but you have a third leg here um, you have a floating wand you know you have things going on a knife being stabbed there I mean it's just really clever uh, on the desk you have a heart or on the tabletop I should say there some people I know will be very excited that there's dice there and it's just a very interesting take on a classic TDM you know so and it only gets cooler I mean some of the art style is just it's just amazing and it still has that woodblock feel to it and this could very easily have been a deck that was created you know in 1701 you know it just would have been taken an amazing amount of work and you know engraving the colors are beautiful too i like that they're very natural and kind of earthly tones they're not too it's not oversaturated and bright and very digital looking uh it's very kind of you know rustic and uh, natural looking like which is what you would see with um stencils you know and um you know there are some spaces where there is like kind of color coming out of the lines it's done in a manner where you know it was stenciled fairly well you know i mean depending on the deck you know some decks you see the stencil the the bleeds are really insane you know um but this is like you know a deck that you know would have been done very well love the emperor i like you know i mean if you see he's got a fuller release on the shield the eagle which is normally on the shield is now on his shoulder he's got that bright beautiful medallion around his neck that's sun but uh anyway so just very beautiful artwork you know you have so much going on little nuances and things that you know you can stare at these cards and it'll serve you well uh, during a reading uh, you know he's the Pope but he has like kind of antlers coming from behind him which kind of look a little bit paganish um, you know you have a Sun and a moon here you see a lot about the Sun and the moon in this deck um, and it's called Tower de, de Ambiguities it was a, I think initially called Shapeshifter because things are moving around in the image you know um, you know the wings have moved from the angel down to the to the two feminine female counterparts of the of the lover um you know a whole bunch of stuff going on again the sun and the moon here became the um the shoulder plates you know which is just beautiful uh this is kind of a cross between type one and two you know because you have it, it has the look of like the type two chariot but then it has the curly canopy um, and it has the, his uh, insignia or his uh, sigil in the uh, nameplate, you know. Um, Justice has, you know, the heart and the head um, being weighed. And she has like a shimitar, I think that's called. I forget how you pronounce it. But, uh, you know, from the, um, the pips, it's not an actual sword. It's like an element from um, the deck, you know, which is just clever. And she has actual wings too, which isn't always the case in every tarot deck. You know, sometimes it's a chair back, sometimes it's wings. Um, the, I mean, the hermit, like you know, he's holding uh, the light in his, you know, or holding his head rather, and the light, you know, an extra hand here. There's a whole lot going on. You know, you can use in, in readings and stuff. Anyway, just beautiful artwork. You know. Uh, the strength card or the fours you have uh, swapped heads you know so this is all going to be interesting to read about in steven's book and see how he interpreted it um th this was interesting the hangman um or le pendu because you have um for one he's got like a flower growing from him and he's being held by a, a hand kind of there which is you know it's useful in a reading you know you have a hand holding you up instead of a rope it kind of makes it a little chattier 
Uh, and then I like that he's added the kind of extras uh, from the pips uh, on the side, um, you know, uh, staves there that, that are the frame that he's being hung from. Death has a lot of growth, all stuff from the pips, you know, like all those beautiful Terra de Marseille type flowers and stuff just growing out of death, which is interesting, you know, it's like, like from death brings new life, you know. So, I mean, there's a lot to be gained by these little details here. Temperance has wings. Um, just really cool um, patterns and just draws you in. It's so nice to look at. Um, wood engravings, some of my favorite artwork is engravings. That's why I'm such a big fan of like Tomas Io too, because of some of his decks that he's done are just so cool to look at, you know, because engravings have this kind of unique look to them that I just love. I, I can't really explain it. Um, and he and Alejandro, although this isn't engraved, it captures that quality to it. You know. Beautiful tower. You know, love all that extra stuff there. If a tower could ever be beautiful, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's this one. I mean, it's, it really is. It's very cool. Very cool to look at. And I love the star as well. You know, there's a lot of that going on. You know, she's looking up at herself. She's been, you know, her head has been uh, unattached from her body and kind of staring up from body of water. It's fascinating. It's interesting. And it's going to be fun to read with. Love that. I mean, you have a figure of the moon. It looks like a figure. The arm stretched out. You know, but yet it still has kind of um, that um, classic type one tarot moon, you know, and you have the full face of the moon, which you see in like John Dodal uh, and Noble and some of the older um, decks, including the, some of the best in Psalm decks as well. Uh, you have the full face of the moon as opposed to the half face, you know, which you see in type two TDM. And a really cool sun. I love that. You know, he's taken elements of the Vandenborg sun or, or the Vivil sun um, and has integrated into the classic sun, which I love, you know. I mean, that's just brilliant and so much fun. So, and I've been already reading with this deck. I had to reorder it tonight um, because I've been doing readings with it and um, it's really, really cool and I'm excited to show you the pips as well. So, Judgment and you have the world. It's just really beautiful. You have all kind of four elements here. Um, beautiful image. I mean, and then he, the animals are kind of in the the world figure. Oh, and the fool, of course. Which, uh, the fool becomes a dog, and the dog is the fool. And, um, you know, there's a lot going on there that you could potentially use. Okay, so now for the pips, what he's done is he's actually... Um, he's integrated a body part for the pips instead of having, you know, all batons. I mean, there are batons in here, you have the batons here, but there's, um, elements of feet in here. Uh, and I thought about that, you know, while I was reading with them, I was like, you know, that actually makes sense because if you read these very functionally, um, you know, you can look at the wands as feet and it can kind of help you in a reading. You know, you think of what you do with feet and it's traveling or it's moving places, going places, doing things, you know, it's actions, you know, and so it's like stabilizing your actions. You know, it just, it's, it's very helpful. So, um, and you know, in a sense, these are kind of, I mean, I don't know, these are, it's a pip deck, but yet it has a lot of cool stuff in there. I don't know if it could be considered a standard pip deck, but it reads like one, but it has a lot of stuff going on in there. Okay, so the court cards, really cool, just very intricate kind of art. It's very, very beautiful. And now, so for cups, we have hearts instead of uh, just cups. You know, you have the heart, and again, you know, thinking of what hearts do, what hearts are symbolically, um, you know, um, you can read it very functionally and it can help you in a reading. Um, the flower here, which is on the cover of the box as well, is the lily. 
which is the flower of Cuba. Um, and he talks a, a bit about that in my interview with him uh, and also in the lecture that he gave with Artisan Taro. Uh, and I think he had a p post on Instagram about it as well. But uh, it's just very interesting, you know. It's a cool little thing. This is the only deck in Cuba or from Cuba that I have. So... And court cards look phenomenal as well. I mean, just very cool. So it keeps that style, the original style, but yet has so many things added. I mean, is that not beautiful? Like, look at that. That's so beautiful. Very cool. Okay, so now um, for the swords, we have hands, which are in it. Um which is really really interesting you know and one thing I've noticed too the pips they um, they're kind of like reversible in a, in a way they make sense both up and down which is cool so he's he managed to keep that the reversibility of TDM in a way you know and you'll see what I mean especially when we get to the to the coins or the heads um, and you know it's just very interesting like certain parts are kind of missing from it um, this is just how he interpreted it. he's made instead of having these two end pieces he has hands you know so it's just uh, it's pretty cool okay and here we have the valet Knight, Queen, and the King. Very, very cool. Okay, this is probably my favorite pip suit, which is very rare for me to love coins. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I like coins um, in some Marseille decks. Like, for instance, the Claude Burdell deck. I love the coins in that deck. Um, but usually, you know, it's not like the most exciting uh, suit in, in the deck. But this is really cool. I love the heads. Um, and again, you know, if you think of heads and you use the elemental correspondences even, it makes sense because, you know, um, you know, it's the element of earth, so you're integrating a head, you know, four heads is like st a stable mind, you know, down to earth kind of thing. Um, I just, I like it. It works very, very well. I love that Florida lease in there which uh, is like the little you know some people fuss over the dice on the table i fuss over the four uh floor to lease and the four of coin um but some of these and again like you have that vandenberg devil head there like there's so much uh tribute to other decks in here as well which has just made it all the more interesting now these aren't as reversible as, well I guess they are in the sense in that the heads are upside down but it's still kind of readable. But there were a couple of them I were looking at, oh this one here for instance. Now that, speaking of the Claude Burdell, you know, the, the face from the uh, from the sun in Claude Burdell, um, which again is just really cool. But then you see if you turn that over, you have like all the faces upright. But then if you turn it this way, you have the Claude Burdell face, so it's kind of like you know, it's it's totally reversible, you know, because then they're like, they're just decapitated heads, and this other one is just staring at you, it's it's very, very cool. Um, anyway, and somebody was asking me about the Page of Coins yesterday, I think it was Simon, actually, from the Hermit's Cave, who mentioned to me uh, one of the decks that we were talking about, he said that in his deck he got, um, he never sold a valet... Uh, on the side like that, it was like a weird um, thing, and it's actually very common um, in Tower de Marseille. Um, you know, you see it in, in some of the historic decks, and particularly like uh, I think Dodal actually. So that is the Tarot de Ambiguities, and it's just such a delightful deck.
Okay, guys, thanks very much uh, for tuning in. This has been an absolute uh, honor to do. I'm very pleased with this deck. It's a very fun reader. It's interesting. Um, I need to play a little bit more with the images to get comfortable with the reading, but it's been uh, very cool so far, and it's produced some, some interesting things. Um, all the information to buy this deck is going to be below, um, You know, including Alejandro's. Uh, social media as well. Follow him on social media. Look out for Stephen Braid's book. Um, you know, I I am very happy to support Alejandro uh, in this project. He's um, been through a lot. He's kind of starting his his new life, uh, and he's just such a talented, amazing artist. Uh, and he's going to be okay, but like it's kind of a rough patch for him because he's not working. Uh, and this is kind of his uh, main source of income right now. Um, so I'm going to ask you if you are on the fence about this deck let that be uh, the deciding factor um, you know help him out um, support him uh, and um, you know it, you'll you won't regret it it's really a beautiful deck but anyway take care guys enjoy thanks for tuning in as always love and peace bye bye